Since our last videos, there has been more and more information in the news about spray foam insulation. I'm Paul Badham, Associate Director at Harrison Clark Charter Surveyors, and in this video, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about spray foam, the problems, and also spray foam removal. If you're not sure what spray foam insulation is, why it can be a problem, or you're considering removal, be sure to check out our other videos. Well, in March 2024, a report was published by the Health and Safety Executive. The aim of this research report was to assess and identify the extent of moisture risk associated with the application of spray foam insulation. This was specifically when it was installed in timber, pitched roofs, and when applied directly to tiles or to roofs which incorporate either a high resistance roof underlay like bitumen felt or a modern vapour permeable roof underlay. The report used simulation modelling to assess condensation risks, timber decay and mould growth. The modelling considered climates in London and in Newcastle and also the relevant British standards associated with moisture management in buildings. There has been some criticism in the spray foam industry over the methodology used. However, in summary, the conclusion was that in all scenarios where open cell and closed cell insulation is applied directly to tiles, the modelling found a high risk of timber degradation. In situations where insulation was applied directly to HR and LR underlays, without linings, the risks ranged between low and high for the degradation of timber. However, in our opinion, each case needs to be considered on its own merits. The research indicates that risks are lower when an open cell moisture permeable insulin is applied in accordance with the prescriptive roof constructions and guidance described in British standards BS 5250 2021. These constructions include the provision of an air vapour control layer on the warm side of the insulation and a space left between the insulation and the roof underlay, which specifically needs to be ventilated. The research indicates that risks are lower when an open cell moisture permeable insulin is applied in accordance with the prescriptive constructions and guidance described in British Standard BS 5250. These constructions include the provision of an air and vapour control layer, AVCL, on the warm side of the insulation and a space is left between the insulation and the roof underlay which, in the case of a high resistance underlay, needs to be ventilated. For sprayed foam insulation, such spaces can be created by the use of card spacers inserted between the rafters or other similar techniques. However, in practice, this may be difficult to achieve without additional works to provide a sufficiently ventilated air gap. We've seen some attempts to do this unsuccessfully and the deterioration of the cardboard spacers. The provision of a spacer may also reduce the depth of insulation which can be practically sprayed between the rafters. At Harrison Clark, we have extensive experience in inspecting spray foam installations across the country, determining compliance with the manufacturer's certification and reporting on the installations. We have extensive experience of expecting properties following removal to provide reassurance for mortgage providers or equity release providers. And we've also been able to provide reassurance where installations appear satisfactory and no remedial works are necessary. Removal might always not be necessary. We've also been instructed by legal firms to provide evidence where installations have not been correctly undertaken. In such situations, our legal contacts may be able to, to assist in pursuing a claim to recover the cost of installation and or removal, particularly if payment has been made for all or part of the works using a credit card. If you need help or advice on spray foam insulation, our team of experienced surveyors are here to help. Please feel free to call us on 02381 550051 and we look forward to helping you.